In this video, we're going to study one of the most important distinctions within linear algebra. That is, whether some set of vectors is going to be either linearly independent or linearly dependent. So to see what I mean by this, I want you to consider some linear combination of vectors. So I'm going to take a scalar a1 multiplied by a vector x1. I'm going to take a scalar a2 multiplied by a vector x2. And I'm going to go all the way down the line to some number, perhaps a nth vector with an nth scalar stuck out the front of it. And I'm going to look at, in particular, this linear combination that is equal to the zero vector. So I have a, I have a set of vectors, a set of scalars, and I'm asking, can that linear combination add up to be equal to the zero vector? Well, there's a couple different cases here. This is going to sort of split. One case is that just a1 is equal to a2. Every single one of these coefficients here, a n, all of them are going to be equal to zero. That's a possibility, right? Clearly the sum of zeros is equal to zero. So, so yes, we can always find some linear combination, but it's kind of like a boring one. And then for the other property, I'm perhaps also not really interested in the case where the vectors are going to be zero. So, so maybe I'll just demand that as sort of an aside here. I'm going to demand that xi here is just not equal to the zero vector because taking linear combination of the zero vector getting to zero is sort of also boring. So I'm not even going to consider that. So then if the one case was that all of the ai's were zero, my other case is that at least some of the ai's are non-zero. So at least some of the, the ai's, and it might be the case that, that all of them are non-zero, but at least some of them are not equal to zero. So now let me try to understand these geometrically. The first of them is just sort of boring. There's nothing to say. It says you go zero amount in the x1 direction, then zero in the x2 direction, zero in the x3 direction, and you just never leave the origin because you're just always adding up zero time stuff. So the first case is just completely boring. But the second case, we can say something slightly interesting about that. If I have some linear combination equals to zero, well, what this means is that First, you have some vector. This is the vector a1, x1. The vector a1, and then it's being scaled by some amount. And then it says, look, okay, maybe you're going to go in some other amount here. I'm going to say that this is going to be a2, x2. And then you're going to go some other amount in the a3, and perhaps it's going to be this one right here. And I'm going to call that a3. That's the scalar in front of the vector x3. And here's the point that you go around in, in some geometric shape, but you end up back at the origin. That is, if I add all of my vectors up in this tip tail way, I go all the way around and then end up back at the origin. Now, if I'm in this right path, the ones where some of the coefficients here are non-zero, then I'm always able to rearrange it. And what I mean by this is, let me just suppose, just for the sake of convenience, that it's the a1, which is not zero. I don't know if that's the case. Maybe a1 is zero, but, but one of them is going to be non-zero. Then what I can do is I can rearrange it like this. I can, I can try to identify just what the x1 is by itself. And I sort of moved it to the other side, all the things that are not x1. So what I get here is like a2 x2 divided out by my a1 with a minus sign out the front. And then I minus a3 divided by a1 x3. And this sort of process goes on all the way finally to an nth term divided out by a1 xn. And so what I've done effectively is I've rearranged it so that the x1 is a linear combination of all of the other guys. Or in other words, my x1, it linearly depends on all of these other ones. And it's for this reason that I'm going to denote the, the right-hand path here where you have a non-trivial or a non-zero way to take a linear combination that adds up to zero. We're going to call that linear dependence because if that situation is the case, then you can find a way to rearrange it so that one of the vectors linearly depends on all of the other ones. All right, so here is my formal definition for linear dependence. First of all, we're talking about the object we're considering is a set of vectors, x1 down to xn. 
And then we're going to say that set of vectors is linearly dependent if you can find these coefficients to it. Coefficients that are not all zero, but such that the conclusion that you've got a linear combination of them that adds up to being zero is true. Okay, so what was the other possibility in our branch? The other possibility was this one that we had over here, the a1 down to an, every single one of them was going to be zero. Now, the idea here is that it is not possible to find any linear dependences. It is, it is not possible to find some way where I can rearrange them where one vector is written as a linear combination of all the others. The only way to do it is if you take zero times the one is equal to this sum where all of the coefficients are zero. We don't care about that situation. So what we have is that there is no way to make a dependency. And so let's call that linear independence. That is, I'm saying that we have linear independence of my set of vectors, x1 down to xn, if, should you try to write them in that way, should you try to write it as a linear combination equal to zero, then it forces all of the coefficients to all be zero. Which is another way of saying that there's no way that you can write this so that there's any linear dependence, and therefore it's linearly independent. So I'm going to try to give an example of some vectors that are going to be linearly independent. Well, what about this vector here? This is the vector I'm imagining is going to go along in my x-axis. And then I'm going to have this vector here that's going to be going along in the sort of y-axis. And this vector, which is going to go straight up. So what I'm trying to imagine here is that I have these 90 degree angles between these vectors. Like these are the coordinates of x, y, and z in three dimensions. But in that scenario where I've got these three different vectors here, there's no way that I could say add up a linear combination of the first two, the one line in x and the one line in y. I'm never going to be able to take a linear combination of them that's equal to a vector that's sitting straight up. Because linear combinations of my x and my y, it forces me in my x, y plane. I can never leave it if I take linear combinations. So there's no way that I can take the, the third one, the one that's pointing straight up, and write that as a linear combination of the things in the plane. So these three vectors are linearly independent. And I'll sometimes abbreviate it just to say linearly independent. Contrast that scenario with three vectors that are all lying in the same plane. If the three vectors are all lying in the same plane, well, I could just take two of them and I could be able to write some linear combination of those to get my third. Or in other words, I could take one of those little triangles within that plane to get back to the origin. So three vectors in a plane are linearly dependent, but, but these three vectors along the coordinate axes are not.